Welcome to Online Worship. I'm Charles Maynard, one of the pastors at Cokesbury in Knoxville, Tennessee. We're glad that you're a part of our online worshiping community. We have great music today, along with uh, the last one in the series of the I Am's. We've been looking at John this summer and looking at the I Am statements, and today is I Am the Vine, and I'm talking about Kudzu Christians. So stay with us and enjoy. Our scripture lesson today is I am the vine. It comes from John 15, 1 through 15, and this is from Eugene Peterson's The Message. I am the real vine, and my father is the farmer. He cuts off every branch of me that doesn't bear grapes, and every branch that is grape-bearing he prunes back so that it will bear even more. You are already pruned back by the message I have spoken. Live in me, make your home in me just as I do in you. In the same way that a branch can't bear groups, grapes by itself, but only by being joined to the vine, you can't bear fruit unless you are joined with me. I am the vine, you are the branches. 
When you're joined with me and I with you, the relation intimate and organic, the harvest is sure to be abundant. Separated, you can't produce a thing. Anyone who separates from me is dead wood, gathered up and thrown into the bonfire. But if you make yourselves at home with me and my words are at home with you, then you can be sure that whatever you ask will be listened to and acted upon. This is how my father shows who he is. When you produce grapes, when you mature as my disciples, I've loved you the way my father has loved, you, has loved me. Make yourselves at home in my love. If you keep my commands, you'll remain intimately at home in my love. That's what I've done, kept my father's commands and made myself at home in his love. I've told you these things for a purpose, that my joy may be your joy and your joy wholly mature. This is my command. Love one another the way that I have loved you. This is the very best way to love. This is a word of God for the people of God and we say, thanks be to God.
I'm glad that you're here. We've been in this series this summer, our summer reading, and I, and I truly hope you've been reading the Gospel of John, that you've been going through that, that you've been uh, hearing not just the passages that we've chosen, but from the way that John tells the whole story of Jesus. And in that, John picks up a thread from uh, earlier in the Bible of talking about the name of God, where he says, God says to Moses, I am who I am. I will be who I will be. And so that bold thread that runs throughout the Gospel of John is, I am, I am, I am, I am. And we hear it echo through practically every page of that wonderful gospel. So these last weeks, we've considered those moments where Jesus takes that name of God and then applies it to ways for us, for us to hear who God is, how God is. I am the bread of life. I'm the light of the world. I am the door. I'm the good shepherd. I'm the resurrection and the life. I'm the way, the truth, and the life. And so today we consider uh, this last one of those I am statements where Jesus says, I am the vine. This is during the Last Supper. Pay attention. It's one of the last things Jesus says to the disciples. And it's an important moment. He says, I am the vine, you are the branches. And so today I want to talk about us as being kudzu Christians. I mean, after all, I am from Chattanooga. Uh, Stephen Defer and I both are from Chattanooga, and we were talking. And I said, yeah, I'm going to talk about being kudzu Christians. He goes, oh, yeah, you remember the kudzu ball in Chattanooga? No joke. Atlanta has the cotton ball. Chattanooga has the kudzu ball. And then there was the kudzu festival. And then I grew up on Signal Mountain where you drive through kudzu. I was visiting my mother this week and thought greatly of you as I drove back down the mountain and the kudzu hangs from the telephone wire over the highway. So you drive through the kudzu. It is everywhere. And so I want you to think about uh, kudzu for a minute. Uh, it's called the mile a minute vine because it grows so quickly. It's also called the vine that ate the South. <laughs> it was brought to the United States in 1876 as an ornamental plant. And then when there were a lot of problems with uh, soil and erosion, particularly in the South in the 30s, it became used as a way to, to uh, help the soil stay in place, uh, kind of erosion control. No kidding, this is, this is, I looked this up, it grows a foot a day. That's, that's pretty fast. Not a, a, not a mile a minute, but a foot a day, that's, that's pretty Im impressive. I mean, that means that it would grow half an inch during the length of this sermon, <laughs> which is kind of frightening. Um, maybe an inch, I don't know, we'll see how long the sermon goes. Um, but... Uh, it, it's a, it's a semi-woody vine with alternating leaves made of three oval-shaped or lobed leaflets. And after three years, it produces purple or red flowers. Is it edible? Yes. Uh, you can eat the leaves, flowers, and roots. Uh, but, you, but I love this. But the roots should be cooked. <laughs> like, you know, you're going to eat the rest of it raw also. But that, that, I thought that was fun. And then there was a piece of advice. It said, you should eat the kudzu before it eats you. <laughs> so that gives you an idea about kudzu and how that vine. But Jesus talks about, I am the vine. Now, he was using not kudzu. Uh, they didn't have it in southern Israel in those days. And so he was using the grape vine. I grew up in a backyard that, that was a Garden of Eden place to grow up. We had cherry trees. We had uh, a pear tree. We had a couple of pine trees. We had a, an arbor, which 
had vines growing over it, and we walked through it from our back door to go up to where our car was parked on the back street. Now, it was not a grape arbor. It was a muscadine arbor because, again, we live in the South. And uh, muscadine is just this wonderful, large grape, but is indigenous to the southern United States. And we had them in this arbor and a whole section over in one part of the yard that had scuffernons, which are golden-colored muscadines. You're just getting a whole botanical education today. But the family that had lived there before us had planted all these wonderful things. We had, and like the Garden of Eden, we had an apple tree in the middle of the yard. So we, it was just a great yard to grow up in as a kid because you could just snack all afternoon in the summer uh, of all, all of these things that grew there. But, but one time, my mother asked the former owners, how do we take care of these vines? And and the, the, the fellow came and showed us. He, he went and, and he stood at the vine and he said, well, you need to direct the vines. You need to place them on the arbor or over on the, near the fence so that they grow up and that they grow along. And, and you need to keep them trimmed so that the leaves will be healthy. And so you've got to trim them back all the time. And then he said, fertilize the soil. Uh, keep them fed. So you see, that's what Jesus says, right? I'm the vine, you're the branches. You're a part of that. He says to follow my life, follow my teachings. He said, you've already been trimmed, you've been pruned because of the word that I've spoken to you. I've given you the pruning shears in my words, in my way that I live, and that that is supposed to keep you trimmed up because you're going to live like I live. I mean, think about it, friends. The early church had no Bible except the Hebrew Scriptures. There were no Gospels. There were no letters from Paul. The early church didn't have any of that written down. And so they relied on hearing the words of Jesus that were passed down from person to person. And Jesus says it's in those words. And he referred to the passage that Rebecca read from Psalm 80. And he talked about that we would be, we, the church, would be the true Israel. The true Israel. Now, now be careful here. He was, away, he, was, he was speaking of himself as Israel in person, of his followers as members of God's true people because they belong to Jesus. You see, he's not saying, no, Israel doesn't count. He's saying that it's a bigger nation than you thought. That God has made a promise to Israel, but has called Israel to be a light to the whole world, to feed the whole world, to help the whole world see. Paul took that image of the vine, took that image of Israel, the true Israel as the church, and called it the body of Christ. And used the image of a body with many parts, but all in one body, working together to be the people of Jesus, to be the true Israel. And so that happens in an intimate relationship. It happens when we are together. It's a way of speaking about an intimate relationship with Jesus that we are to enjoy, and that word is in there, joy, and to cultivate, to help it to grow. You see, when we cultivate something, we make the conditions right. We direct it. We, we keep it trim. We fertilize. In, in the different translations of this passage, one of the words that's used is abide in me. Others said live in me. J.B. Phillips said 
You must go on growing in me, and I will grow in you. Now, the fancy word that we use for this is called sanctification. Not a word that many of you work into conversation anymore. But it's the idea of being made perfect in love. In the Sermon on the Mount, right after the Beatitudes a little bit, Jesus said, Be perfect, therefore, as your heavenly Father is perfect. Now that whole passage says, You've heard that it was said you shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy, but I say to you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you, so that you may be children of your Father in heaven. For he makes his sun rise on the evil and on the good and sends rain on the righteous and on the unrighteous. For if you love those who love you, what reward do you have? Do not even the tax collectors do the same? And if you greet only your brothers and sisters, what more are you doing than others? Do not even the Gentiles do the same? Be perfect, therefore, as your heavenly Father is perfect. And we say, well, nobody's perfect. But Jesus says, be perfect in love. Learn to love the way I love. Be perfect. When we approached our ordination, one of of the things that happens is that we are asked a set of questions. They're called John Wesley's historic questions. And here are the first four questions. There are actually 20, but these are the first four. Have you faith in Christ? Listen to the second question. The second question, are you going on to perfection? And then the third one is, do you expect to be made perfect in love in this life? And then the fourth question is my favorite. Are you earnestly striving after it? But it's not a question just to ordained clergy. It is the question to all of us. Are we earnestly striving after it? Are we sticking to the vine? Are we staying close to Jesus, close to the way Jesus loves and lives? It was uh, 50 years ago that I preached for the first time as a pastor in a church, Smith Chapel in Southwest Virginia. Now, to even do that, your local church has to recommend you. And it's done at a charge conference where the district superintendent comes and you are interviewed by the Staff Parish Relations Committee before that occurs, and they ask you a set of questions, again, based on Wesley's questions. And the first question is, do you know God as a pardoning God? Do you have the love of God abiding in you? Do you desire nothing but God? Are you holy in your manner of conversation? Have you gifts as well as evidence of God's grace for the work? Have you a clear, sound understanding, a right judgment in the things of God, a just concept of salvation by faith? Do you speak justly, readily, clearly? Have you fruit? Have you truly, have you been truly convinced of sin and converted to God and are believers edified by your service? You're asked those questions. You have to say, you have to talk through that in front of people that helped raise you. You see, people who have lived out the very things they're asking you, if you are a part of, they're very subtly saying, are you a part of the vine? Now, the story I tell you in this is that I had to come before the charge conference of my local church. I had to be voted. My, one of my brothers was about eight at that age. And they have to vote by, by secret ballot. 
So everyone has to write yes, no. And uh, my mother said that my brother was quite nervous about this vote. And after there were things said about me in front of the group, my brother leaned over and said to my mother, I think he has a good chance. <laughs> it tells you how a brother knows you. I think he had things that maybe would disqualify me. But, uh, but you see, that's part of what we're called to be to be perfect in love. But the only way that happens is if we stay connected to the vine. I saw someone railing on uh, social media the other day, and they said, there is no such thing as a progressive Christian. God does not progress. God is the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. Well, friends, I want to say God does not change, but I sure hope to God we do. We are to grow in Christ. We are the ones who are to progress. God does stay the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow, but for heaven's sake, we should not. We are not the same. We are to progress in our trust of God. We are to progress in our love of one another. We're the ones that are to mature, to grow in our faith. We are to, to mature, to grow in our faith, to grow in our understanding of God. There's nothing wrong with a childlike faith, but we must take great care that we don't have a childish faith. We grow in relationships with each other. We grow in marriage. We grow in family life. Janice and I have been together uh, all these years, but the relationship that we have has progressed. It is not the same as it was when we began that relationship. Our children have grown up. We now have grandchildren. Our relationship with our children has progressed. It has grown to be a more full, a more complete relationship. We see it in our grandchildren as well. As they grow older and we grow older, we progress. A progressive Christian is a growing Christian. And there's no such thing as a solitary Christian. The branches that decide to go it alone will wither and die. There's no such thing as a solitary Christian. We can't go it alone. We don't progress, we don't become perfect in love unless we're connected to the vine. Not the brother that thought I didn't have a chance to get uh, the vote, but the other brother decided at one point that he was gonna run away. And, and I'll never forget my mother's response. She said to my brother, we're going to miss you so much, <laughs> which caught my brother off guard. She said, now listen, you're, you're getting older. You're, you're almost 10. And, and she said, it's okay. You don't need to worry about it being dark tonight when you're by yourself on the street. She said, you'll be all right. Uh, I know that you don't always like what we have for supper, but do make sure you eat something. Uh, now take enough clothes that you'll be warm when this winter comes because you'll need those. And you, wanna, and you might want to make sure that you, maybe you should walk and live nearer the school so that you won't have so far to walk when you get up. And my brother said, you know, may, maybe here would be good. Maybe I'll just stay here. You, you can't live as a Christian by yourself. We do it in concert with others. We remain as people of prayer. We worship. We worship together. But we have to stay in touch. We have to stay in tune with Jesus. You see, because to be a family, to be on the vine, we have to be committed to each other. 
and look after each other. You see, because in the end, we have to stay connected to the vine, to Jesus. And we do that by staying connected to each other. To take a different image, if you want to put out a fire, spread the coals out and they'll go out by themselves. I think of Benjamin Franklin's words when he spoke about that Continental Congress that signed the Declaration of Independence. He said, we must hang together or we will certainly hang separately. You see, it's together that we're the vine, that we hang together, that we stay together and burn with an intensity that doesn't happen if we're by ourselves. I am thankful that I am a part of this branch of the vine the branch that Cokesbury is, the branch, the leaves that you are. Jesus said, I am the vine and you are the branches. Again, thank you for joining us. We're glad that you're a part of this vine, this part of the vine. You see, it has many ways, many branches, and you are a part of that. Be at peace. Love God and your neighbor and stay connected to the vine. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, amen.